Rodney asks, Ethereum presale, ICO or no? Do you consider the Ethereum presale an ICO? If so, why? If not, why not? This topic has been hot recently due to SEC announcements about ICOs being securities. I'm curious to hear Andreas' thoughts on this situation too. Um, is the follow-up comment to that question. So I think Ethereum probably has one of the best arguments as to its role as a utility token rather than a security. Um, keep in mind, unlike many of the other fundraisers that have happened with various uh, startups, Ethereum isn't really a startup. It's not a company. There is no uh, company, and there are no shares or equity or registration. There's a foundation, but that foundation is a Swiss nonprofit, and you certainly don't get shares in that foundation or in future profits. Ethereum also um, has a specific role as a platform, and that platform has been the platform for all of the other ICOs. So. Um, the token, Ether, is um, a token that is meant to be used to pay for gas. That's the argument for Ethereum. The idea is that Ether is how you control the use of resources on the Ethereum platform for other applications, including ICOs. Ether pays for the network fees, the gas, for running smart contracts, for doing transactions on the Ethereum platform. Uh, I think Ether as a utility token and Ethereum as a utility platform is probably a fairly well-developed uh, argument and a robust argument. Uh, I don't really see uh, Ethereum's presale as an ICO. I think it is the most credible utility token out there in terms of it being utility rather than security. I'm not commenting on the value of it, or its use as a currency, or a speculative instrument. That's not um, my answer here. But simply comparing it between a security or utility token, I think the argument is uh, quite robust for it being a utility token. I would like to, to, come, uh, to come back to the uh, the intersection of the traditional financial industry and the yes, digital currency ecosystem. And it seems that the initial coin offering happening now yes. is the first instance where these two worlds have to coexist. Correct. Where we see some businesses that cannot access normal financing, get digital currency financing. What's your perspective on this trend? What's your, what's your view? Uh, who here has heard of the term ICO? Okay, ICO is basically the idea of creating a digital token that represents um, perhaps shares or something else that can be bought online through these digital currency platforms. It's a play on IPO, initial public offering, um, except that it's not registered, not legal, completely global, completely open to all investors, and bypasses all of the regulations around funding, uh, which is causing a few minor headaches, or major headaches if you work for the SEC. Um, what's happening with the ICO space is it's opened up this entire gap between organic and angel investing, VC and stock markets, and it bridges all of that with this new model that allows any company anywhere to raise funds from any investor anyway. So connecting everyone in this massive new market. That has created an enormous surge of excitement, an enormous surge of money. Uh, I think the latest estimates are well into the $40, $50 billion raised in the last year uh, through these mechanisms. Um, it's drawing all kinds of sharks and worms and snake oil salespeople um, who are taking horrible advantage. And here's something that most people find hard reconciling in their minds, this idea that of the current batch of initial coin offerings, 99.99% are either outright scams or uh, indistinguishable from outright scams and will fail miserably and return nothing. And simultaneously, ICOs are the most radical and impactful development in fundraising 
of the last hundred years. They will fundamentally transform fundraising worldwide. They will break down enormous barriers. They will create enormous liquidity and flexibility, and will make this an international market that fundamentally undermines the uh, Palo Alto VCs right up the ro road here. Um, it's a very interesting space. There will be a lot of tears. There will be a lot of burnt investors who will lose a lot of money. But that doesn't change the fact that in that process, these offerings mature. What people fail to understand is that ICOs do not simply represent shares or share offerings. These tokens are a hybrid thing that is simultaneously a share. It can be a product reward. It can be a loyalty point or loyalty card. It can be a, an access token that gives you access to a product or service. It can be the currency by which you buy a, a software as a service, uh, for example, storage or computing or other uh, resources and do resource allocation. It is a market index that represents uh, the companies that are playing in a space. It's a technology basket fund. All of these characteristics are in a single token that can play all of these roles. This is not just simply, hey, let's do a new form of shares, bypass the SEC, and create this orgy of funding. Although, at first glance, that's exactly what it looks like. Um, it is a very, very interesting technology that creates a completely new thing, this token. And this tokenization and monetization of resources that can be done with these tokens is very, very big. It's very, very interesting. And it's not just a free-for-all that it looks like right now. By the way, I haven't invested in any of those. Um, when I look at these ICOs, what do I look at? The same things I did when I was doing due diligence for VC firms. Team, plan, market, timing, right? product, all of those things. Um, and I look at all these ICOs and I go, no, 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 and hell no, and walk away. <laughs> so uh, be very careful. Don't go playing into these markets thinking you're going to get rich quick. These are get poor quick schemes, uh, and uh, you will lose your money. As they say, what does it take to make a million dollars in this space? Start with two.